To collect all digital communications became the declared goal of the NSA in the wake of 9-11. But this goal is surprising because the 9-11 Commission report showed that the US intelligence services had possessed sufficient information, but they had failed to connect the available information to prevent 9-11. It's actually fascinating and ironic that 9-11 is the turning point for all of the surveillance because obviously after 9-11, the question that Americans had, other than why would anybody hate us, this country that never bothers anyone and only tries to spread good and peace and democracy in the world, why would anybody attack us? That was the main question. But the second question was, how could a plot like this be uh, formed and be carried out without detection? We spend billions and billions of dollars a year in our intelligence services on the CIA and the NSA how could something like this take place without our government knowing about it? And there was, of course, a commission that was assembled and uh, funded by the U.S. government called the 9-11 Commission that set out to ask, answer a variety of questions, including that one. And the answer that they gave was not the reason the attack happened was because the U.S. government hadn't collected enough information about everybody, and therefore you should go and collect more. It was exactly the opposite. The conclusion was you had the information in your possession to know that this attack was happening and who was doing it. The problem is, is that you had so much information that you had collected that you were incapable of understanding the significance of what you had already possessed in your hands. In other words, the problem wasn't that there was too little information that the U.S. government was collecting. It was the opposite. It was that there was too much. But instead of ingesting and following those conclusions and saying we need to be more focused on our surveillance instead of putting entire populations under a microscope and collecting billions of data pieces every day. We need to just focus on the people who are actual dangers and, and that way we'll be able to focus on what we have. They did the opposite and they said we need to just collect more. And the reason that they said that was because if you are the person who's tasked with preventing another attack, it just feels safer for your career, for your reputation and history, to make sure that you grab as much as you humanly possibly can so that no one after an, another attack can say, oh, you didn't do enough. You don't want to be caught not doing enough to stop something that has happened. And increasingly, we believe in the power of data. We do science, we predict the future. That's effectively what science is. We, we, we look at data and we predict what's going to happen. And if we miss something like 9-11 happening. Um, it's seen as a failure that, you know, the data was there. Why weren't we looking at it? Why weren't we analysing it in the right way? And so it's a very difficult line for a politician or an intelligence service to take, which is we're going to leave some information untapped. We're going to leave some analytics undone. Because when the next bombing or terrorist event happens, you are caught out. Why weren't you doing enough? Why did you protect this? And so we get into this endless trade-off between privacy and security, which is always a trade-off. From a political standpoint, the, the trade-off between privacy and security is very real. And what we started to see increasingly was the data is all there. It's passing over networks that we can tap. Of course we're going to access it. Of course we're going to, to, to analyze it and store it. By grabbing everything and by creating these systems designed to spy on the whole world, they actually further cripple their own ability even to carry out the objective that they claim they have because when you're spying on the entire populations of France and Germany and Brazil, um, you know, you're not going to find the person who's plotting to blow up a plane over Detroit on Christmas Day or to attack Times Square or to attack Paris um, or Brussels because you are too diffuse in the information that you've collected. You've been, you're engaging in mass surveillance and not targeted surveillance and, and when you do that you actually ironically end up blinding yourself. But irrespective of whether you end up blinding yourself by collecting too much information, 9-11 ushered in the belief that targeted surveillance on its own was a thing of the past.
that what was needed now was the comprehensive surveillance of all information. The current NSA is constructed around the notion that um, uh, comprehensive information collection is one of the key components of protecting the United States' interests and its population. Uh, and what that means is that the goal of the NSA is becoming uh, the goal of developing as comprehensive a data picture as possible of the world uh, with which it interacts. Uh, and that's why, as we saw from these um, uh, revelations, the Snowden revelations, that it's engaged in comprehensive information collection and storage. And you know, there, at times this was treated as if it was uh, uh, inadvertent or accidental or a mistake. These are not mistakes. <laughs> Gathering all of the information, all of the signals intelligence that, uh, that can be captured is the goal. And as Mark Andreevich went on to explain to me, there is a particular logic as to why the NSA post 9-11 believes that it needs comprehensive surveillance. Uh, if you're trying to connect the dots in a complex pattern and you collect some dots, but you haven't collected the other dots, if you throw away those first dots that you've collected and then you collect some new ones, you might miss the pattern that would emerge when the old dots and the new dots connect. <laughs> so you have to keep all of the dots. <laughs> and what that means is that no more winnowing. All of the information has to be collected and it has to be kept. Because even if now it doesn't make sense or doesn't generate useful correlations, in the future it may. You know, the fantasy of total information collection is an impossible one, and yet one that continues to drive the, the direction of the collection of information. Develop more sensors, collect more information, redouble the world. Uh, and that, you know, that, it, it, the goal of redoubling the world becomes, in a sense, the goal of these comprehensive forms of information. It's exactly the opposite of winnowing. If winnowing meant pull out from the world the pieces that are relevant, um, Comprehensive data collection means reconstruct an entire world that now you can enter into some type of data monitoring process that will make sense out of that whole world. I guess it's kind of, you know, hitchhiker's guide stuff. You know, like, what's the answer to the whole world? <laughs> Collect all of the world, put it into a computer, and see what it tells you. It's an impossible fantasy, but it's the fantasy that shapes the world we live in.